inside right now has just taken the podium. Let's head inside the Tropicana Field where Jim Calhoun is meeting with the media. Uh, we felt all along taking notes down in the Cincinnati game on the pick and roll, who should bring the ball up the court for Duke, etc., that if we had a chance, that we'd have a, we'd have a reasonably good chance to beat a great, great Duke team. And I couldn't be proud of my kids and happier for our university and our state and all the things that we did. I, I'm just thrilled and I, I feel like I've won a basketball game and by tomorrow I'll know won the, our kids have won the national championship. Questions? Let's start up front here, second row. Ricky, can you talk about the, the last play that where you guarded Langdon and he traveled and how you saw that play play out as he was driving on you? Uh, first of all, you know, I'd like to give Duke a lot of credit. Uh, they are a great team. You know, we had to give it our all to win the game. And, um, you know, I heard Coach K telling Trajan to go get the ball, you know, and uh, I felt that if he got it, he wasn't going to do anything with it because it was down to crunch time and me, it was... It was him against me, and uh, you know, I knew I was going to get a lot of help from my teammates, and you know, he, they tried to clear it out, but you know, I stayed solid and I stayed down. I, I didn't go for any pump fakes, and he tried to do a spin move, and I was right there. So, um, fortunately, he traveled, and uh, we got the ball back. Right here on the left, Jim. Can you uh, comment on what this means to you personally? After all the near misses, all the sweaty gyms, all the long nights, all the whole career. It means that we won a national championship, and I've been fortunate enough to win some Big East championships, and I'm no better coach than I was three weeks ago, and no worse a coach than I was three weeks ago. That's exactly what it means to me. You thought I was kidding you before, and uh, everybody felt that I had to do something. I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was be true to my kids and coach the best I possibly could, and that's what I've done. Uh, tomorrow, or tonight, if you hear a loud yell, that will be me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but beyond that, but beyond that, when I was saying Ricky Moore was the best defensive player in the country, I hope he believes in me that he didn't need this tournament to prove that. Because he knows I don't give out false praise. And I've said he's the best defensive player I've ever coached. And when I told you that I didn't need to get to a Final Four as badly as I wanted to, like anyone who would like to win the highest honor in their profession, uh, to think that I could coach basketball. You didn't believe me, and I'm just telling you the truth. That's how I feel. I'm as happy as anybody. As I said, you hear loud, loud yelling tonight, it will be me. And I'm happy for our kids, our program, our school, and obviously personally, to beat someone in a team, and, and someone like Mike Krzyzewski and, and the Duke basketball team, I couldn't be prouder, and the kids were right. Uh, I, you know, we played the right team. The two best teams in the country played tonight. Right here on the right. Jim, could you, could you tick off the keys to your game plan, and um, also could you uh, explain why you left one, one thread of uh, net up in, the, up in the rim? Well, we uh, game plan uh, starting somewhere in November. Uh, I started just watching games and taking notes. Uh, I, I took notes on Cincinnati, who I thought at one time was the best team, on Duke and so on. And the assistants all now know that when I broke these blue cards out, I think some of you guys have seen me with the blue cards I always carry around. Uh, we started preparing ourselves, if we had a chance, to meet one of these teams down the line somewhere. And uh, our plan was simply to try to, A, put ball pressure on them to make uh, Langdon bring the ball up the court, not Avery, which would stop their acceleration and get them into offense quick. B was to double big to big. Uh, Elton Brand, who's a great basketball player, and then don't rotate, but only, only, excuse me, only have the same guys rotate to the same spot so it would be much more zone. Sometimes if you have other people coming at them, you get confusion. We had no confusion because we knew where our spots were. And then we tried to do everything we could off a of pick and roll. Anytime one of their bigs played us, that made it an automatic rule for us to bring him out and then try to exploit that by driving to the basket. So we, we felt we saw some things as great as Duke was that we could use and uh, yesterday we also, I would say the fourth key Mike, was yesterday we had a shoot around, not a practice. Um, we had talked to a couple coaches who had been here before and our kids had done so much for us, the only thing we needed to tell them was what they needed to do to beat a great Duke team and uh, they did it to perfection obviously. So I think those were the four keys. Yesterday we tried to do a, did everything humanly possible to give them a couple things to hang on to but in turn 
have a light shoot around to conserve all of our energy. That's unusual for us, by the way. Okay, right here on the right. Ricky, could you respond to what your coach said a few moments ago about you being the best defensive player that he's ever coached? And here you come in the national championship game, and you're facing arguably the best shooter in the country on the last play of the season. Uh, respond to that, please. Yeah, um, you know, I believe that. You know, I go out and I work hard um, every day in practice, having to go out college and rip in practice. That, that only makes me better. And, um, you know, I give a lot of credit to my teammates, too, also, you know, helping me off, you know, coming around screens and they hedge out. And, um, you know, down to the last play, I, like I said, I knew um, it was him against me. I mean, my will to win was going to take over, and it did. Excuse me, I, Mike, I didn't answer one question, which I should answer. Uh, this, this trend up there is for John. I wanted to make sure that, that he knew that. Go ahead and repeat that, John. I'm sorry. I left a small string up there for Joe. And, uh, really simple. We left it on the ground. Right here. All right, welcome back outside Tropicana Field. We are back live outside Tropicana Field. Well, people, the crowd has gathered outside here. And behind me right now, Everybody knows this guy, Big Red. Big Red leading the crowd. Red, you want one on camera for the national title? On camera. Lynn, camera three. Big Red, take it away. Take it away, Red. It's all you. It's all you, Red. There we go. There we go. That was special request. The fans here were dying for it. We brought Red up. They've come out to oh, celebrate, yeah. Tate. Oh, yeah. This has been a scene. They've been chanting your name as much as they've been chanting national championship. Well, they're going to go through everybody's name before that night's up. But it's, it's a great night, and it should. I mean, everyone, including the fans, we must make, light, make note of that, that this is for the state of Connecticut. Coach Calhoun, the first thing he said when he accepted the national championship for the best fans in America and the best basketball state in America. And they are partying in this parking lot like you would not believe. Take a look, folks. Big Red leading them on from our March Magic set. Big Red absolutely owns this crowd down here tonight, folks. Let's head back into Tropicana Field, where I believe Jim Calhoun is still at the podium, finishing up his national championship winning press conference. With 34 and 2, the only time we've lost is when we haven't been whole. And uh, we're a great basketball team, and we beat another great basketball team, the best team we've played all year. Uh, but no, we, we're not shocked. Uh, as I said, I'll be yelling later when this really sinks in. But, uh, no, I don't think we're shocked. Uh, we're happy as heck, and we're proud, and, and I couldn't be prouder of these guys, but, but I don't think any of us are shocked. I mean, I, we, we truly believed we could beat them. We knew it was going to be a tremendous challenge, but we, feel like we, we, we felt we truly could beat them. Right there on the left. Uh, along those same lines, is it fair to say that playing, knowing you were going to play Duke, and actually playing a team like Duke has brought out the best uh, in your team, both from coaching and player standpoint? Well, I don't know about from coaching, because all I did was tell them what to do, and the key, those, those are easy things. Talking's easy and, and diagramming after 27 years, we should be able to put something together for them. The key is, is what they did on the court. And when adversity hit, 9-2, whatever the school, early stuff, the way they reacted to it um, was absolutely incredible. Uh, the, these kids uh, have run hills for us and done everything humanly possible to get themselves to this particular point. Uh, they, they spent, as, as Kay said the other day, uh, Israel was really nice, but it was about 100 degrees also. Um, and they've done everything that a coach could possibly ask for. And so I think the Duke matchup was what they wanted. They wanted to beat the best. We really, our kids have been saying, and you've heard me say, we hadn't played our best game yet. And tonight, if you count character, we might have played our best game.